Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, I came back a little early to do a video. I I, I missed doing videos. <laughs> uh, so look, this is what I'm gonna recommend to people. Collect comic books. I'm gonna tell you why. This'll be a fun little five minute intro, but I'm gonna talk about the joy of actually collecting comic books. Uh, floppies, that is. So uh, as most of you know, I mean, I collected comics not a long time before I broke in, but about a year give or take. So I went from, you know, being uh, just a person to someone collecting comic books. And a year later, I was working in Wildstorm about I it was there was a little bit of a break in between. But anyway, so I've been collecting comics now for like 25 years. And I'll tell you what, my collection had gotten unmanageable. And I had thinned the herd several times throughout my uh, 25 years of collecting. And what I mean by thin the herd is uh, unfortunately, just throwing stuff out or giving it away. Um, you know, it was just, I had too much shit. It's cringy now to even think about. And also I would do this thing. I know Kelsey, uh, said that he does this too, is, uh, you know, if I liked a cover and didn't like the comic book, sometimes I would even rip off the cover. There's a couple of ouches I have from doing that. But, um, anyway, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm, I'm actually um, sharing stuff from my collection, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Instagram, too. Um, but uh, what I wanted to ask all of you is, if you could recommend any comic book collecting YouTube channels that you enjoyed, let me know, because um, I, I'm more interested in, in like Bronze Age, Silver Age, and stuff like that. Modern is okay, but it's just, to me, it's a lot of chasing variant covers, and that's not as interesting to me, to be honest. I, I, I'm to really honestly, I'm not even a, a fan of variant covers. I think that that uh, if you if you draw a comic book, you should be doing the cover for your own book. That's my own opinion on it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. But uh, I know that people enjoy variant covers, so it's it's not like I'm I'm uh, unaware of of the interest in them. But anyway, what's the point of getting a freaking cover if the if the cover looks cool but the inside sucks, or vice versa? I've worked on books where we're doing great stuff on the inside and you get a variant cover that's a turd. Turd! <laughs> I, th there was a run that I did where this person who did the variant covers, I think of the six or so covers that they did, maybe four sucked and two were good. That's, that's, that's not a good average. Professionally speaking, you were phoning it in. Um, <laughs> anyway, so look, here's the other exciting news. We are only 27 people away from cracking 20,000 subscribers here, which is is pretty insane. It's it's funny because I have two minds on it. One is I I know how hard I worked on YouTube to build up the following, and I know how much time and effort I put into it. So in some ways it makes sense to me. But the the, the flip side of that is that I'm very aware that you can really work hard on YouTube and it's a slow, slow burn trying to build a following. So I see both sides of it. I always had this fantasy that I wanted to get to 30,000 subscribers. Like that was literally like the top of Everest for me. Um, you know, 100,000 and all those, those are more like fantasy numbers. Um, Cause I don't, I just don't think that I've ever set my channel up for that kind of uh, YouTube following, but I think my channel is interesting and it will continue to improve and evolve and stuff like that. But anyway, so let's get back to the wild storm magic. Um, you know, people have been talking about Grifter more and more. In fact, in some of the comic collecting YouTube videos uh, that I was watching, uh, a couple of guys were talking about, um, Grifter might actually end up being, you know, somewhat of a player in the DC universe, which is, is cool. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know much about it. I don't work for DC anymore and haven't for about a year now, but, um, uh, you know, I mean, it's exciting to see a character that I enjoyed in the past, you know, uh, get a little bit of life breathed into him. And, um, man, it would really be a trip if he ever made it into like a TV show or movie. I, I, I think that that would be really cool. Um, so anyway, but, uh, you know, I, I had seen some people on Facebook talking about it and they said that, that a lot of them felt that Ryan Benjamin did some of the best grifter stuff that, that, you know, of, of all the artists that have worked on grifter that, that, uh, he had a knack for doing it. Well, this is a Barry Windsor Smith cover, but anyway, so let's get into this. We're going to look at some wild storm art. It's Ryan Benjamin, Tom McWeeny, I think Steve Siegel, 
um, wrote it, and uh, they were a great team. I can share some memories and reminisce a little bit. And uh, what else was I going to say? There was one other thing. Oh, we're going to look at two books. We're going to look at issue one, and I think issue five, something like that. But uh, all right, let's get to this. Barry Windsor Smith cover. So, so when I was hired at Wildstorm, I was aware of Barry Windsor Smith stuff. I liked it. Um, wasn't really crazy about his interpretations of the Wildcats at the time. 25 years later, I actually really enjoy the way that he draws the Wildcats. I think like the Wildstorm Rising stuff, to me, it's aged very well as uh, I've aged or matured maybe as like a consumer of comic art. Um, at the time, I just thought that the aesthetics were different. It was a rougher line. I was used to this very fine precision-y stuff. But this is a great looking grifter, you know? I mean, it's it's cool. It's, you know, it doesn't look like uh, Travis's grifter exactly, but... Uh, it's it's nice. So all right, let's get into this and let's look at some grifters. Some of these scans are dark, so I will be adjusting them quickly as we get through them. And uh, yeah, well, let's get to this. Oh goodness, grifter with his backwards baseball cap. I was not a fan of that look. I wasn't a fan of it in Wildcats when Jim drew it. And uh, I don't know. It's a little too grifter. Seems like way too much of a badass to be doing this. And in fact, he his age i think drifted a little bit initially like where it didn't feel consistent to me um you know because this is like a look that's in my opinion someone maybe between the ages of 18 and like 24 25 would wear i mean if this is i'm not sure what year this story takes place but i, I would believe that grifter is a bit older um is didn't he fight in the vietnam war or am i tripping <laughs> Ryan does the best big shots and this is incredible too so so is as, as I mentioned in one of the other videos about oh and I wanted to say like smack if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do it I would be crazy if we actually cracked 20,000 subs today so if you've got extra accounts or whatever let's kick it to 20k just for fun <laughs> <laughs> shits and giggles but anyway ryan does great great big shots and what i wanted to say is uh, i had said in another video that we're i'm trying i wasn't initially going to go like chronologically through wildstorm but i'm i'm hitting sort of a an area and right now what the area that we're looking at is what i consider sort of like the second wave of talent that came through wildstorm but really it's the first wave of new talent which is you know the core image founders founded image and jim had a homage studios which was his his friends and and that ryan benjamin i believe brett booth j scott campbell travis they all kind of came in and uh, it's really the first wave of new talent but but it's like you could perceive it as second wave i, I now i'm not 100 percent sure when dan norton got there and then you know again you've got a lot of great inkers tom mcweeney shows up sandra hope uh I, you know i'm not 100 percent sure when sal regla got there i kind of consider oh scott clark also uh penciler obviously but um you know and then trevor scott so i don't really know the evolution of that but what i'm going to do is i am going to start reaching out to these people what i thought i would do is so this was the idea for the 20,000 subs uh, celebration i was gonna try to do a month of of interviews believe it or not it might not i have to finish um what i'm working on right now but as soon as i'm done I, i'm gonna try to do like a month's worth of interviews it may not it wouldn't be daily but um yeah, it would be really fun to just talk to a bunch of these people and get their memories on things i definitely think i could get ryan some people are just not comfortable doing youtube or they won't want to be on the camera and stuff like that so i don't know what the success rate will be of like hitting people up um but i'll give it a shot you know i mean i would like Lieber mayho came on my channel and he had an absolute blast he loved it um you know oh interesting <laughs> brighter version of the thing but ryan is great at big shots and this is incredible to me that this is a guy that's just getting to wildstorm and ryan's very young at this point and he's kicking ass man you know this is like really dynamic art and and uh that's what always impressed me about the image uh what would you call it? like the image talent is is you had some really exceptional young artists doing great stuff um, and comic books is very, very challenging to draw. I do a lot of this kind of stuff right now, like how his background is. It's a little vertical, and, and you're not sure how to fill the space exactly. It's, it's, it's just a learning process. I've mentioned, you know, that I have a Patreon, and I do lots of reviews and lessons. And uh, 
I'm more empathetic now than I've ever been to people trying to learn to draw comics because I'm in the shit. I'm doing it. I've got 50 pages of sequentials that I've drawn for Crystal Planet done, and it's hard work. And, and man, you know, you finish a hard page and you think you've sort of, like, achieved something, and, and then you read the next five pages of script. You probably have already read them at that point, but uh, you're just like, oh, man, god dang. I gotta draw this now? Just finish something. What? <laughs> What's up? I need to take a week off and let my brain cool down. But it's, I think that's how these artists get so good is you're just constantly pushed and pulled. And finally, you just, you're, you, <laughs> the defensive part of your brain just gives up and goes, all right, I'm just going to take whatever skills I have and I'm going to solve these problems and put them on the pages. And that's where you, that's when you see people go from, you know, uh, beginner, beginner, intermediate to, to they start kicking some ass. If it just starts to fall into place, it's an interesting thing. I, I liked. I actually did like how they would do the little image book uh, things in the comics. I just thought that was really fun. It's a nice little duffel bag. I I actually like how he drew the kid here. He he looks like a kid that would get picked on. <clears throat> All right. I have fun memories of of actually seeing Tom McWeeny ink some of this stuff. Not not probably this issue. But, but as they moved through the run, it was really, really impressive seeing these big, just exciting pages on Tom's desk. Um, and boy, he inked so good. Uh, a lot of people, uh, if they didn't know Tom from the work that he did before, you definitely know it from Battle Chasers. He just was on fire for that book. And Joe was doing great work. And the combination of the two together was just perfection. But, you know, Tom was killing it for many years before that. He's a very, very good penciler. He's a Qbert school graduate, if I'm not mistaken. He did a book called Roach Mill. So, shout-outs to Tom McWeeny. Now, let's give Ryan Benjamin some props. I inked Ryan Benjamin really the last, like, three years of my inking career. Um, the last piece that I did, in my opinion, was a Superman cover with him, and that was it. I spiked the ball in the end zone and walked off into the sunset. Inking career complete not going back i'm not even taking inking commissions anymore that's how serious i am about it it's not gonna happen <laughs> i burned every bridge behind me i don't think that's the right terminology for it but uh anyway well all right so we've got these cool things so i don't mean to, to drift and reminisce too much all right so grifter's running down the street you know another thing about grifter is which is challenging to me is is a, a, a viewer of the comic is his color combinations are not colors that i like together i'm not a fan of yellow orange green and brown but i love grifter so i forgive him for his his things i think the the drag the jacket maybe could look more sort of like an old military jacket they don't really age that color they turn into more like a very light pea soup green in fact let's do it let's lower the saturation i'll not that you guys don't know but yeah, I mean, a military jacket ends up, l like, lighter than this, but, well, let's zoom in a bit. You know, my dad, all this shit around the house, and my grandpa, too. But, you know, I mean, the jackets a a age that color a bit more, so when you see these bright, super saturated colors, which I know is the image thing, I'm not clueless, but, uh, I don't know. The color combination, it's like Robin. I'm not a real fan of, like, Robin's colors but different strokes for different folks yo all right what do we got how many panels is this page one two three four five six seven this is a seven panel page he keeps it fairly exciting for you know what it is um nice big shots he does vary the camera or not the camera size but the actual points of interest size i'll show a try to point this out so that people understand what it is so the thing is 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 you've heard this thing about small medium and then large on a page but it can be a little confusing to people sometimes and i'm going to kind of explain what it is so the small medium and large in my opinion i've never heard anyone explain it this way but this is how i personally see it is it's it's the point of interest size it's not literally like oh okay this guy is big because he starts here and he ends here so that's bigger the point of interest on this guy is literally this spot right here that's really all you're looking at him on 
this is the point of interest here but this is a fairly big shape although it's not that interesting this is a similar size to this and this and this this is a similar size to that this is this feels a little bit bigger but it's this that feels bigger this shot here is probably the biggest in my opinion that takes up the most real estate so he gets he gets kind of like his you know big medium and small in it's and and on a page with a lot of panels but um we'll, as we look at more pages i'll point it out again on another one and it can kind of show you what i mean we won't do it on this one because everything is similar sizes but ryan's real good at mixing up his size well i mean here you've got small you know medium and large because this is the point of interest you know but yeah, sometimes I'll see people and they'll go, well, my things are different sizes. I'm like, yeah, yeah but they really aren't. Because although you drew something big, really all we're focused on is this. And it is the same size as everything else. It's just, a, it's the, the variety makes the page a little more exciting to look at. So. Oh, this is cool. So a little flashback to Team 7. So see, again, this is why it gets confusing to me. Because if Grifter was in Team 7... Um, I mean, Deathblow, I mean, I kind of consider Deathblow like the Dark Knight, you know, like he's much older. But Grifter might have been younger. Maybe Grifter was like 17 in Vietnam. And, and so uh, by the 90s, he's, uh, I don't know how old he would be. 37-ish. But that's why I'm saying the backwards ball cap thing doesn't really feel very Griftery to me. It feels more like frat boy kind of thing. Little nuances like that are important, you know. It's it's like oh, this is cool. This is very Kirby, fun. I like this this page a lot. Man, some great shapes going on here. This is figure eight is beautiful. This is all really really fun to look at. Man, this is a nicely laid out page. This page just dances, dude. That is really kick ass. Yeah, wow, he really did an awesome job with this. This is so fun to look at. And this, and this, and this sweeps to here, and this. Man, it's good. The dance. All right. I think Ryan right now is working on a Batman Grifter book or something like that. I don't know the name of it, but uh, what I saw online looked good. So, so he's actually celebrating Grifter as we speak. pretty cool ships yeah i don't i don't remember these villains to be honest the next issue that we're gonna look at is actually very interesting grifter's got a very trippy mask you'll see what i mean i actually like the colors too i like this hot uh, sort of ultraviolet light that they put on his mask i, I actually do think that looks cool And here we've got real big, medium, and then a small, you know. He really amplified it there. But yeah, if you remember and, and you follow any comic comic related YouTube channels, let me know. Comic collecting, meaning the, the actual comic books. <clears throat> I, I got that CLZ Comics app that you can upload uh, your comics onto the app and then it organizes everything for you by just about every way you can imagine value creative team it does it all for you it's incredible 14 bucks for a year i probably will never not have a subscription to it because it's like it stores stuff on the cloud so if you lose your phone or whatever it, it'll still be saved on the cloud it's 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 really really cool and uh it's gonna help me sell stuff it's great too because the thing is is okay with that app say you you meet someone and they go dude do you have any blah blah blahs you can look immediately on the app and know exactly like what issues you have and stuff like that and then if you put actually the condition of your books you know you could do a quick trade with someone hey i'll trade you 10 10 of these dollar books for 10 dollar books of some other title so it's it's pretty handy and try to sell like half of my collection thin the herd It's funny because if you didn't see the hair here, it looks like Emp kissing Zealot. Oh, Emp. Hmm, all right. Oh, he's upside down. Interesting. This is nice. 
Man, Ryan's good. Yeah, this is a solid issue. Num good number one. One of the reasons that I actually picked an issue further in the line, too, is I always like to see how... Um, oh, I remember this spread. It's really cool. I always like to see how artists, um, once they get into a run, um, are they able to maintain uh, the quality, the level of detail, um, and... Uh, I know Ryan can. He's an animal. <laughs> Ryan goes beast mode. You just get out of the way because he's going to get it done. Um, yeah, it's always fun to see. You know, like at, the joke is sort of like you have your whole life to do your first issue, and then you got a month to follow it up with issue two. Oh man, cool! I love this character. He was in Gen 13, I think, was the first time that I remember seeing him. Although, I think this is an earlier appearance. I could be wrong on that, but I remember Travis... Oh, not Travis. J. Scott Campbell drawing Defile. But yeah, it's a fun design. Okay. Run, Grifter, run! Why not? I quit my family. I quit Team 7. <laughs> I like these buildings. They're, the windows are boarded up. That's funny. Oh, that's funny. Where are you at, Grifter? You're in a rough part of town, my friend. I always love, like, if they have the letters columns in the back and these old books, I think are a blast. It's always fun. Hey, this guy was in, actually in San Diego that wrote. But, uh, yeah, I always like to look at the people's names and see if it's someone that I know online now. Some of these people probably still collect comics, I'm sure. And if, if even if they took a break, some people come back. Even for me, I mean, I have times where I'm more into the hobby and then, you know, I get into, like, work mode and maybe I kind of ignore that side of things for a little while. Oh, Tom Harrington. He was my editor on some books. Um, okay, so, yeah, let's look at another issue. This will be fun. So, well, let's look at all the credits here. Oh, so in the colors. So, so again, this is going to be Wendy Fouts did color guides for this. And then Wildstorm Effects is this group of people right here. And they actually color separate the pages. So they would get um, the color guide and then replicate um, that uh, on the computer uh, for the printed comic. So Rob Rowe colored Steampunk. And then Alex, yeah, see, that's what I thought his last name was. It's Blayart. I didn't want to mispronounce it, but I, I, I said I didn't remember his last name. I just didn't remember how to pronounce it, but it, it, seeing it, it's Blayart. So yeah, Alex Blayart and Rob Rowe created badass colors. Homer Reyes was the colorist that I mentioned on the Adam Hughes uh, Gen DV8 cover um, with uh, the what looked to be Dave Stevens had inked it and just signed it in a different spot. But all these people, just about, I recognize the name. There's one, there's like three names that I don't know the people. But again, I wasn't working at Wildstorm just yet. Soon, I was bubbling up. I was probably doing samples around this time. Right, so now we're going to do... So this is Grifter issue four. These files are much darker. So I, like I said, I'm going to have to lighten them as we go through them. But uh, it's all right. It only takes a second. Let's go. Control L. Really, really cool cover. Oh, man, that's nice. So, yeah, I thought this was really cool. Check out Grifter's mask here. I like that. I actually think that's really, really badass. And these, man, Ryan with the guns and holding the hands holding guns, he does that really cool. Now, whether or not it's accurate, only Kelsey will know. <laughs> Kelsey, is he holding the gun pro appropriately? Uh, ooh, I know this technique. That's a fun one. You kind of make it, like, thicker and thinner and kind of do stuff like that with your line. It looks real real cool. Uh, yeah, so I I don't know the story on this. Oh, and this is Sal Regla Inc. So Tom, 
I, I wonder, did Tommy Brett Booth around this time, maybe? Hmm. I don't know why Tom wouldn't have inked the issue, because I, I always, he did the cover. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so uh, let's get into this. I'm very, very curious to see where Grifter, if uh, hopefully it's in this issue, uh, how he got this mask. Let's see. Oh my god, it's so dark. But not for long. Alright. Yeah, all these bootleggers. You guys need to rescan all the Wildstorm early shit. <laughs> These files that we've all been sharing for the last, like, ten years. It's time to just do new ones. I don't have time. Well, you know, the nice thing is, is going through my comic book collection, I'm going to actually be able to find all this shit now. I'm so excited. It was funny, is I found a big box of uh, new stuff that I had bought over the last couple of years. I hadn't even seen it in forever. It felt like, just, it's like everything is just in gridlock. But, uh, anyway these come in handy i mean honestly like i'm not a proponent of like stealing comic books online but i mean even for myself sometimes i need to reference something that i've worked on and i'll i'll, <laughs> I'll look online because it's faster than trying to find the comic uh in my uh collection so i own all these i probably have multiple copies of them. this is a very funny face all right what do we got mm, let's let up. Man, this is really fun stuff to see. This is a nice shot, too. Now, my guess is that Ryan probably li li laid this stuff out all on his own, but uh, you never know. It's possible that, that uh, you know, you, at, at this point, they may have been working in a little bit more of a group hive mind kind of thing where you can bounce it off of, you know, a peer or whatever and kind of get a little bit of feedback. But Ryan was very self-sufficient, I'm sure. But this is cool, man. Really, really nice shot. Especially by issue four, I find it highly unlikely that uh, he was doing anything other than probably doing this stuff on his own. Uh, Ryan does, uh, it's called Comic Artist Boot Camp with Alex Sinclair and I think Carlos Deanda. Um, and uh, might be something that people, are in if you're interested in... Uh, learning to draw comics better and you don't do my patreon which is cheap for now um yeah you can check out comic artist boot camp run yourself through the paces so this has got a little bit of a travis vibe to me oh man brian always would do the big rendering he's pretty good at that and this is cool. I'm actually excited. There's like, like in the next couple of years, meaning the next couple of years of Wildstorm, there's some really, really fun books that come out like Defcom 4. We've got Ryan did Phantom Guard. I think he did like a Midnighter Grifter book. There's all kinds of little weird gems. We'll get into Dan Norton on Black Ops. And then uh, I'm trying to think what he followed that up with. You'll start to see Sandra Hope inking things and, and JD with his inks, although we've touched on a little bit of JD. Um, but yeah, it'll be fun. I'm hoping I can find copies of uh, Trevor Scott did a book called Black Sun. That he actually, I don't remember if he wrote it, but it's, it's probably one of the first fully drawn digital comics. Um, and, you know, a lot of Wildstorm people really know Trevor more as a uh, inker, but uh, yeah. He was drawing a book fully digital on his laptop for a while. It was crazy. It looked good, too. It was very, very detailed. This is nice. This is a really nice page, in fact. I don't know. This almost reminds me of Santini. I don't think it is, though. No, it's not. Classic, classic image comics folds. <laughs> Works though. Simple, simple and effective. Whoa. Yeah, Ryan's really good, man. He's really good. I didn't look at the credits. Was uh, shoot. I wonder. Let me see one thing. I'm gonna open. Uh, see one thing i just want to see open these and fast. 
Oh, okay, we didn't get the credits yet. I guess the credits will be at the end of it. Alright. I just want to make sure, because I, I wanted to, um... I wanted to see if it was only Sal that inked it. Some of these inks do look like Tom McQueenie to me and don't look as Sal, but I could, could be wrong. Too. Like, this looks like Sal a bit more. Like I mentioned, Sal kind of will do more of a blip and blop type thing, and he has a little bit more of a, um, a warm quality to his inks. They're a little thicker um, sometimes. This, You know what? This kind of looks like Tom, though. It's hard to say too because it's it's. Uh, I think all of these guys are you know artists. Uh, they all improved as they went along, and so seeing some of their earlier attempts on stuff, mass is detailed stuff too. Um, sometimes it's difficult to tell who it is just based on the era. Yeah, this is nice too. I'm telling you, Ryan with the big shots, it's crazy. This is, uh, man, this piece in person would be so huge. Yeah, dang. Wow, that is really cool. The mask is an interesting thing, too, how to handle the mask over Grifter's face. I think Ryan does a really excellent job here with this. Um, you know, the, the eye holes, maybe, you know, like they're pretty tight on his face. Um, but past that, I mean, I actually think he did a really good job with it. It looks it looks pretty pretty cool. Man, that was an exciting. It's always fun to go back and look at like what these artists did, um, you know, early, earlier in their career. So you see like the carryover into their later stuff, and some sometimes artists actually kind of circle back around. Like they'll go way past. Uh, what they were doing early on and then um further into their career they actually start to kind of like go back to some of the early stuff somehow i guess it's just kind of in your dna this is cool it's got a little bit of like a what do you call it like a mad max kind of vibe all right the Scilab, always have to have a Scilab. They're, it's always, Scilabs are always lit green. They don't have any other type of fluid or lighting <laughs> they allow in these rooms. I'm guilty of it too. It's You just always picture it green. Why do we picture it green, Rich? I, I don't know. Earthquake. All right. I'm hoping by this point in the video, as people are watching it, I'm at 20,000 subs. <laughs> Everyone who's watched the video has unsubbed and resubbed, logged into all of their other accounts and subbed, and we've done it. Honestly, it's not that important to me, but it would be cool. I think I went a little, a little hot on this one, but... It's nice. Really puts a lot of detail in the sleeves, man. It's it looks good. I actually like it. It's all maybe a little busy, but it, I don't know. It kind of works for me. Sometimes this stuff is hard, man. It can be challenging. Then then you just kind of get it, and it, then all of a sudden it works. That's weird. That's super weird. This almost feels like he's running into the Grifter Cave. Like, if if Batman has a Bat Cave, Grifter should have the Grifter Cave. He could have a giant, uh, what, uh, Statue of Liberty instead of the dinosaur. <laughs> Grifter fights for America. He has a, a replica of Mount Rushmore in his cave. Although, uh, Grifter is more edgy. He would have something. He would have something more hardcore. Bob's big boy. <laughs> Some people probably don't even know what Bob's Big Boy is. This is nice. Man, it's cool. He would do a great Wolverine. You see this? I, I'm thinking like Dwayne Turner Wolverine for a split second. I'm trying to remember. If, did Dwayne Turner do any stuff for Wildstorm? That would be kind of fun to check out. I know he did some. He did a book for Top Cow that was actually really quite nice. Or it was it was like a look like a Top Cow book. It was just real dark dark thing i've got copies of it somewhere oh my god going through my comic book collection has been so fun 
It is a lot of work though, but it's it's a, it's a necessary thing for me at this point. This stage of the game, I'm I have to do it, but uh, it's it's enjoyable too. And if only the the collections that I had bought had been taken slightly better care of, I would have some pretty cool shit. There's I still have cool shit. Just a lot of them are kind of beat up. This, the meaning of the, just other stuff that I've acquired. This is really nice, too. God dang. But he really, really is good. I appreciate this a lot. Man, I'm not at this level yet. This is really, really cool looking. That's the one thing. is you start drawing comic books, you should know your place pretty quick of where you're at in terms of like learning and ability to achieve certain looks. Now, this page drifts a little bit. It's not as strong as the other one. But uh, you know, when he's on, boy, I'll tell you what, he's kicking ass. <laughs> this is pretty funny. The Rocket Tower. Yeah. Oh man, I love these. Grifter leaping. Always a classic. And this is back in the day when when people weren't drawing in Clip Studio. Cloning stuff and light boxing shit. I saw an artist online just the other day. It was like, I see all your tricks in the art. You're not fooling anyone with this stuff. It's like they, they get a decent result from it. You know, they put colors on it or whatever they do, but it's like it just doesn't look drawn. It just looks like you put another layer over something and outlined it and then finished it or put a little bit of an extra costume on it. It's just not... It, it, I don't know. I sense it. Maybe other people don't. Who knows? Does it matter? I always say probably not. There is something fun about just seeing someone be able to draw well. I think it's, you know, there's a cool factor to it. As <clears throat> you appreciate the skill involved, you know. You can see he's getting a little rushed here. This is like, this looks a little bit kind of pedal to the metal. Happens, you know. P part of the learning process of drawing comic book pages is actually being able to like manage your time you know what i mean and, and your energy to be quite honest it's a combination of the two you can get very mentally fried by the end of a book and and just you know you kind of start to shut down it takes a tremendous amount of energy to get up for a page every single day it's real hard um, Ryan was only penciling this stuff. Obviously, he had someone else inking it. But, like, for me, penciling and inking Crystal Planet, like, on kind of a daily basis, it's, it's, you really, really, um, have to work up. See, this looks like a different penciler. There's something, uh, this almost looks like, um, what's his name? Terry Shoemaker? We'll see when we get to the end of the book. I'm, I'm... It looks a little like Ryan. Or there's definitely two inkers on this for sure. I'm yeah. This can't be Ryan. I wonder if this is. I'm gonna guess Terry Shoemaker. Let's see if I'm right. So I know Terry would come in and do things for Watson. He's a real good penciler, but you know, sometimes you get thrown these these like help us finish a book and and uh, you know it's not fun. Oh come on, seriously? What the fuck? Hold on, let's see something here. It doesn't have the credits? Did I miss the credits? What is going on? No, this is going to drive me nuts. I definitely don't have time to go through my collection today to actually find the comic. There has to be credits. All right, let me see something real quick. Sometimes when I'm shooting videos, I miss things. So I'm just going to see something here real quick if they actually do a credits in here. That's really weird. I wonder if it just didn't get scanned. Hmm. I like I said, I I don't think that these final pages are Ryan Benjamin pencils, and it doesn't really look like Sal's inks. Although, if the pencils were rough enough, I mean, even a really really good inker sometimes can not look like themselves on certain stuff. I mean, I've definitely been in that situation where it's like I can only do so much. You know, there's there's not a lot of room to like make this stuff look killer. Um, but 
I don't know. This does not feel like Ryan. Like this doesn't either. Anyway, all right. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I apologize if I drifted or rambled too much, but I know people kind of enjoy sort of the, what would you call it? The spontaneity, <laughs> we'll call it, of my videos. If I just did it straight, it would get dull. You never know what I'm going to say. That's what makes it fun. So, all right. You have a great day. I don't think I'm going to do Super Fun Sunday this Sunday because, I, like I said, I'm trying to finish a job. And um, the second I do, we'll celebrate. And uh, I'll start hitting up people to come on. We'll do a whole bunch of interviews and maybe some drawing videos. It'll be fun. But we'll make it uh, an exciting celebration. And we'll do it for... Um, who knows? Maybe I'll try to do 20 interviews. Again, it wouldn't be all in a row, but... 20 interviews for 20,000 subs. Something like that. All right. Talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.